you know, so this Vim thing, Vim, this Vim thing that we've been using, the first, I mean, we don't need to talk about whether you should use Vim or not. We talked about that in a different video. Now we need to talk about how to set Vim up in the terminal. And this, unfortunately, is not really explained anywhere. So, um, and I, I want to be really clear here. We're talking about Vim, not NeoVim, not BI, even though it's similar. And of course, not Ed or any of those others. So uh, I just want to be really clear on that particular point. I'm not particularly bashing NeoVim or any of those other things today. Uh, but I think it's important that you know that the, the reason I say that is because people cite one of the advantages of NeoVim is that it has a much cleaner, easier, happier configuration. I disagree completely, but that's what they say. So if you are coming to this video because you want to set up Vim and you think that the video is going to work for NeoVim, I need to make sure you know that that's not true, right? Um, Neo, as, as far as I know, actually, I could be wrong on this, but Neo, I think NeoVim configuration files uh, are incompatible uh, with Vim configuration files. Um, and uh, NeoVim people love to hate on something called Vim script which is the language of that we use in the VimRC file. T this video is not going to break down the content of the VimRC file. That is a separate video, probably separate, several separate videos. Um, this, is, this video is going to tell you where all the files go, and I'll suggest to you one way that you can make it easy to set up these files anywhere uh, relatively quickly. So whether you're building a container or you're setting up a desktop or server or whatever you can just go in there and clone your dot files and then use that there is a separate video however about how to set up and your dot files and why you might want to do that um and so that i think that sets up everything for this video um at the beginning the only thing we're going to talk about in this video is where are the configuration files for vim where do they go you know, uh, we, we will talk briefly about how to install them if you haven't done that already. It's super easy uh, on, on Ubuntu. We're not going to talk about the other uh, distros. That they're not included in the boost. Um, you can figure that out. It's not hard. And um, then we'll talk about where these files go, how you can set them up, how you can reuse them and stuff, okay? Uh, again, this is very personalized to the things that I think are important for Vim everybody's got different opinions. That's what's so great about Linux and, and Unix is that you can have different opinions. You can, you can configure that crap out of it to make it the way you want it. And that is fine for you. Um, so I'm just going to share some of this with you right now. So the first thing, uh, to find here, I'm going to turn this off because we, I don't want to obfuscate that. Um, so, so, so here is, uh, my dot files. So there's again, there's another video on this. So this is a dot repo. This, I, it's just, uh, my organization, why I put it under capital repos is explained elsewhere. Um, and so under here, under the dot repo, there is a Vim directory. And inside of that directory, um, there's a readme here that talks about it. Uh, you know, this is, uh, is why not Vim 8 plugins? Um, because they suck. Okay, so if you, I mean, you can read that. You, that's kind of over your head if you're a beginner boost person. Um, the setup script is super important, but, and this is going to kind of give an overview of where all the files go and why, oh, look, shell, shell check is, is mad at me. Oh, I didn't. Okay. Shell check is mad as mad as mad at me. All right. I'm going to fix that. I guess I'll have to fix it. Whoopsie. Use. Why? Okay. Well, I'm not doing that right now. How about we just use bash instead? How about that? Because everything I install on is going to use Bash anyway. Yeah, let's do that. Do, 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 do. There we go. It's happier now. Git add. Uh, commit. Give me one second. Uh, switch. Vim setup install script. To bash it's actually safer and I always have bash so anyway we were using there so you don't know you probably don't know bash yet too much and, and that's okay if you don't this first part right here is just checking to see 
if we have Vim on the system, and this check here, uh, it's checking to see if we have Vim Tutor on the system. If you don't have that, you probably have something called Vim Tiny. And this is just a reminder to me that I need to do apt install bin uh, Vim. So let's just describe what I mean by that. So um, I believe the default on Ubuntu server now is to install a package called Vim Tiny. And it is it does not have all the stuff of the larger Vim, bottom line. And so you probably want that. And, and you'll probably want to do the installation for that. Um, uh, and that's what that check is doing right there. Uh, this here is it creates a, a hard link. I'm sorry, a symbolic link. And it overrides it. The F says replace it. PWD is the current working directory wherever you're running the script. Um, and it takes the .vimrc file inside of this directory and links it. It makes a symbolic link to .home slash vimrc. Uh, this makes a directory inside of .vim. Uh, this should probably be dash p. Um, oh, I know why I did that. I did that because dash p is not is not uh, POSIX compliant. But let's just do this instead. Uh, if you do dash p, it will create the .vim directory and then create the auto load directory. So that's fine. Um, same here. Uh, okay, so this is the symbolic link. It says, "Hey, this." plug file that I have in this directory right here. Let's make sure to put it over there. Now, something that I have done in the past is make these files so they can be seen in here. If somebody were to just wander in here, they'd be like, I can't see anything, right? And I'm actually kind of tempted to change this right now um, because, I mean, I, I go back and forth on this particular case. Uh, these these files are hidden. You didn't see them, but do they really need to be hidden in the setup directory, right? Um, the reason it's that way is so that things are the same exactly the way they would be. Um, but one of the things I could do to simplify this would be to change this to be plug dash dash vim, and then to change uh, this one to just be vimrc. And if I do that, then um, the only problem with that is that, like, if when I'm trying to, if we if we move it, let's say dot vimrc uh, to vimrc. The only problem with that is that when we go to to edit it, um, it well, I guess it figured it out. Okay, so let's do that. I'm going to move the dot vim directory to vim, and um, so. I mean, you could actually make that. You could move Vim to Vimd, however you want to do this. But this is this is just all for you, is to kind of know how to organize your stuff, right? Um, let's see. Play. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So we have PWP plugin, PWP plug dash Vim, Vim auto load. Oh wait, 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 wait. This one would be. Oh wait, we don't even need that anymore. I don't think we need the the dot vimd. Find vimd. Vimd auto load plugin vim. Yeah, we don't need any of that now. We can just do. I mean, the only reason you would do that, maybe you had other stuff you wanted to put in there. Um, and so that might be a reason to do it. And I think that's probably why I did it. But I'm gonna go ahead and just move plug. Uh, into this directory. So I'm going to, because then I don't have less files to deal with. I'm going to put that in here. And that leaves our Vim directory empty. And uh, we need an RMF because it's empty, because it's not got anything in it. So now we just have the two files. Why is plug executable? Oh no, it's not executable. It's just a special file. So I was just, it was the same color, so I was confused there for a second. So let's look at my setup script. I know I'm spending time here like simplifying, but it's worth it. So here we make the directory, and then this says to symlink plug dot whatever. Um, and so so when we run that script, that script will show you. It will actually um, when you run setup, it'll put all the stuff in the right places. Okay, and um, so I ran setup, 
now when you do ls dash l um home so dot uh vim we can see we have the auto load and we see the, the vim the plug the vim directory uh is pointing to the right thing now i still you'll see that's what the f was for so before it was pointing to the other thing and since i moved it now i had to rerun the setup script so this is pointing this shows that inside of my home directory this is somewhat confusing people think they have to change stuff in etsy local and places we'll talk about that in a second um and you home artifacts rob dot vim auto load vim dot plug dot vim and what this is is this is loads the only plugin manager that matters uh, as far as i'm concerned for for vim we will do a separate video on the why you should use plug as your plugin manager and why you should not overly populate stuff in your plug directory. Um, and as you can see in VimRC, um, here I'll go find it. There's the plug stuff. Um, if plug is detected, then load the plugins. Uh, again, another video goes over that, but there's the use of plug. And that ha that's the only thing that has to be pre-populated uh, besides your VimRC file. And by the way, let's look at the vimrc file again here, uh, .vimrc, and you'll see that it is now symbolically linked to this repo here. The thing that's great about that is that if you make a change, whether you edit it by going to .vimrc uh, like this, so you just want to make a temporary change, or you want to edit it in its location here, um, you know, you can do that. You can go ahead and, and, and add that. Um, as you can see, I'm going to have to make some git changes here. I'm going to go git add.vim. You can tab complete rc um, git status. We're going to do a video on git as well, of course. Um, I probably have several. And then we need to add the new files. So git add plug vim. Uh, get add vimrc get status okay so i did update the setup script so get add setup the gpt change is a different thing i made that some time ago so that's a different commit get status all right so get commit um uh, uh dash m move uh let's see make uh vim stuff easier to find and then get push and that'll push it up to my dot files. I am editing on the main tree because it's my dot files. Otherwise I would normally not do that status. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add this other thing that I forgot to add the other day in my chat GPT. And we could say git commit, uh, add, uh, scripts, uh, GPT, get push. Let me make sure there's nothing in there. I don't think there's a token in there. Nope. Okay, so uh, get push. And really, that's it, my friends. I'll put the fishies on. That's all. That's all. There, there are essentially two files that need to be added. The vimrc file um, and the, vim, the plug.vim file, which goes in your autoload directory under .vim. Those two things, those are the only two files you need to get going. And then once you start up uh, Vim, you'll be it'll initialize the plug and you can actually get it to download the plugins. That's a separate video. We'll talk about how to get all of the plugins and to uh, use them and what they're for. That's a totally separate video. So just those two files and make sure you keep track of those because you're going to definitely want to recreate that later. So consider a dot files.